We are going to discuss regarding structure and function of nucleic acids. First, we consider regarding history. The foundation of genetics as a molecular science dates back to 1869, just three years after Mendel reported his experiments. It was in 1869 that Frederick Mischer discovered a new type of weak acid abundant in the nucleic of white blood cells. Mischer's weak acid turned out to be the chemical substance we now call DNA means deoxyribonucleic acid. For many years, the biological function of DNA was unknown and no role in the heredity was ascribed to it. An important first step was taken by Frederick Griffith in 1928 when he demonstrated that a physical trait can be passed from one cell to another called as transformation. In a milestone experiment, Oswald Avery, Colin MacLeod and MacLean McCarty, this three person showed that the substance causing the transformation of cells was only the DNA. This experiments implied that the substance responsible for genetic transformation was the DNA of the cell. Hence, that DNA is the genetic material. A second pivotal finding was reported by Alfred Herzi and Martha Chase in 1952. They demonstrated that the outer protein coat of a phage, phage means virus, does not enter the bacterium, it infects. Whereas, the phage inner material consisting of DNA does enter the bacterial cell. Since the DNA is responsible for the production of the new phages during the infection process, the DNA not the protein must be the genetic material. In some viruses, RNA means ribonucleic acid is the genetic material. Example is tobacco mosaic virus that infects tobacco plants consist only of RNA and protein not the DNA. Now, let me discuss the components of nucleic acid, which are the main components of nucleic acids. So, nucleic acids are made by joining nucleotides in a repetitive way into long chain like polymers. Nucleotides are made of main three components, first one is phosphate, second one is sugar and third one is nitrogenous base. First is nucleotides, what is nucleotides? As already said, the nucleotide consists of phosphate, nitrogen base and sugar. A nucleoside is only a sugar base compound. Thus, phosphate containing nucleoside called as a nucleotide. So, sugar plus nitrogenous base is equal to nucleoside. When nucleoside combined with the phosphate, it makes a nucleotide. Now, nitrogenous base. Denitrogenous bases are aromatic heterocyclic compounds. DNA and RNA both have four bases, two purines and two pyrimidines in their nucleotide chains. Both molecules have the purines adenine and guanine and the pyrimidine cytosine. But DNA has the pyrimidine thymine while RNA has the pyrimidine uracil. Thus, Three of the nitrogenous bases are found in both the DNA and RNA, whereas thymine is unique to DNA and uracil is unique to RNA. Now, sugars. Both DNA and RNA have five carbon sugars and all sugars are pentoses, but DNA contains D deoxyribose and RNA contains D ribose. Deoxyribose has one oxygen less at C2 compared to ribose. Now, nomenclature of nucleotides, nitrogenous base and sugar combine to produce nucleoside. If ribose sugar is present in nucleoside, it is called as ribonucleosides. So, ribonucleosides of A called as adenosine, 
ribonucleosides of G called as guanosine, while of C called as cytidine and of U called as a uridine. The binding of nucleotide components, how it is? It is customary to number the carbon atoms of the nitrogen base and deoxyribose molecule. The carbon atoms in the deoxyribose are numbered as 1 prime to fry prime. The numbering begins to the right of the oxygen atom and proceeds clockwise. The atoms in the purine ring are numbered as 1 to 9 and for pyrimidine it is 1 to 6. Why it is? Because purine is having a 9 carbon while pyrimidine is having a 6. The carbons of sugars are differentiated with an associated prime. The sugars are bound to nitrogenous bases by beta and glycosidic bonds. The N9 of a purine ring binds with the 1 prime carbon of a pentose sugar to form a covalent bond in the purine nucleoside. While in case of pyrimidine nucleosides, the linkage is between N1 of pyrimidine and 1 prime of carbon of a pentose. The hydroxyl groups of nucleoside are esterified with the phosphates to produce 5 prime or 3 prime monophosphate. Nucleoside monophosphate possesses one phosphate moiety. The binding of second or third phosphate moieties to the nucleoside produce nucleoside diphosphate or nucleoside triphosphate. Now, biologically active structure of DNA. In the early 1950s, a number of researchers began to try to understand the detailed molecular structure of DNA in hope that the structure alone would suggest answer to these questions. The general feeling was that the biologically active structure of DNA was more complex than a single thread of nucleotides linked together by phosphodiester bonds and that several interacting strands were involved. But in 1953, Linus Pauling, a Nobel laureate who had discovered the helical structure of proteins, was investigating a three-stranded structure for the genetic material. In 1953, James Watson and Francis Crick at Cambridge University published a well-known two-page paper in the journal Nature entitled with molecular structure of nucleic acids, a structure for deoxyribose nucleic acid. This paper which first put forth the correct model of DNA structure is a milestone in the modern era of molecular genetics. They had decided that a two-stranded structure was more consistent with available evidence. Three lines of evidence directed Watson and Crick is the chemical nature of the components of DNA, X-ray crystallography and the Chargraff's ratio. DNA X-ray crystallography when Watson and Crick were studying DNA structure, Maurice Wilkins, Rosalind Franklin and their colleagues were using X-ray crystallography to analyze the structure of DNA. The molecules in a crystal are arranged in an orderly way so that when a beam of X-ray is aimed at the crystal, the beam scatters in an orderly fashion. The scatter pattern can be recorded on photographic film or computer control devices. The nature of this pattern depends on the structure of the crystal. The cross in the center of the photograph indicates that the molecule is a helix. The dark areas at the top and bottom come from the bases stacked perpendicularly to the main axis of the molecule. This image of the DNA molecule stimulated Watson and Crick's understanding of its structure. Now, second one is Chargaff ratio. Chargaff's rules disproved the tetranucleotide hypothesis. The four bases of the DNA did not occur in a 1 is 2, 1 is 2, 1 is 2, 1 ratio. His results gave insight to Watson and Crick in the development of their model. Until Erwin Chergap's work, scientists had labored under the erroneous tetranucleotide hypothesis. This hypothesis proposed that DNA was made up of equal quantities of the four bases. 
Therefore, a subunit of this DNA consisted of one copy of each base. Chagaf carefully analyzed the base composition of DNA in various species. He found that although the relative amount of a given nucleotide differs among species, the amount of adenine equal to that of thymine and the amount of guanine equal to that of cytosine. That is, in the DNA of all the organisms studied, a 1 is to 1 correspondence exists between the purine and pyrimidine bases. This is known as the Chagaps rule. Now, the third one is the Watson and Crick model. With the information available, Watson and Crick began constructing molecular models. They found that a possible structure for DNA was one in which two helix coiled around one another a double helix with the sugar phosphate backbones on the outside and the bases on the inside. This structure would fit the dimensions X-ray crystallography had established for DNA. If the bases from the two strand were opposite each other and formed stair in the helical later. The diameter of the helical could only be kept constant at about 20 angstrom if one purine and one pyrimidine base made up of each rung. If two purines per state would be too big and two pyrimidines would be too small. After further experimentation with models, Watson and Crick found that the hydrogen bonding necessary to form the rungs of their helical ladder could occur readily between certain base pairs, the pairs that Chagaf found in equal frequencies. Hydrogen bonds are very weak bonds in which two electronegative atoms such as oxygen and nitrogen share a hydrogen atom between them. They have 3 to 5 percent of the strength of a covalent bond. Thermodynamically stable hydrogen bonding occurs between thymine and adenine and between cytosine and guanine only. The relationship is one of complementarity. There are two hydrogen bonds between adenine and thymine while three hydrogen bonds between cytosine and guanine. Another point about DNA structure relates to the polarity that exists in each strand that is one end of DNA strand has a 5 phosphate and the other end has a 3 prime hydroxyl group. Watson and Crick found that hydrogen bonding would occur if the polarity of the two strand ran in opposite directions that is if two strands were anti parallel. Now, let me see other types of DNA structure. First one is a bent DNA, adenine containing DNA tracks are rigid and straight. Band conformation of DNA occurs when A, A means adenine tracks are replaced by other bases or a collapse of the helix into the minor groove of A track. Bending in DNA structure has also been reported due to photochemical damage or mispairing of bases also. Now, second one example of other structures of DNA is triple stranded DNA. Triple stranded DNA formation is less stable than double helix. A thymine can form two hoxtine hydrogen bonds to the adenine of a T pair that form T A T. A protonated cytosine can also form T O hydrogen bonds with guanine of G C pairs and that results in protonated C combined with the G C means C G C. Now, another example is a four stranded DNA. The ends of eukaryotic chromosomes, particularly eukaryotic chromosomes, namely telomeres, are rich in guanine and therefore form G tetraplexis. Polynucleotides with very high content of guanine can form a novel tetrameric structure called G quadrats. These structures are planar and are connected by hoxtine hydrogen bonds. Anti parallel four stranded DNA structures referred to as G tetraplexes have also been reported. Telomeres have become the targets for anti cancer chemotherapies. Now, let me discuss regarding RNA. 
RNA means ribonucleo acids. RNA has certain similarities with DNA structure and also specific differences also. Main difference is RNA is generally a single stranded polynucleotide while DNA is a double stranded. RNA contains ribose sugar in place of deoxyribose in DNA. In case of nitrogenous base, uracil is present in contrast to thymine in DNA means uracil is present in RNA while in case of DNA there is a presence of thymine. Now particularly in case of char gaps rule is not followed in case of RNA due to single stranded structure. So, Cytosine and guanine content is not equal in RNA. In the protein synthesis process, three different kinds of RNA serve in three different roles. mRNA means messenger RNA, tRNA means transfer RNA, rRNA means ribosomal RNA. Apart from these three RNAs found in cells, other RNAs namely snRNA means small nuclear RNA. HNRNA means heterogeneous nuclear RNA, SCRNA means small cytoplasmic RNA and SNORNA means small nucleolar RNA are also found in the cells. Now first we discuss regarding messenger RNA. The mRNA is synthesized from DNA. In eukaryotes it is synthesized as heterogeneous nuclear RNA in the nucleus. During processing, HNRNA liberates the functional mRNA which enters into the cytoplasm for protein synthesis. The eukaryotic mRNA is kept at the 5' prime terminal end by 7 methyl guanosine triphosphate. This capping helps to prevent mRNA from hydrolysis by which enzyme 5' prime exonucleases and it also helps in recognition of mRNA for protein synthesis. Now second one RNA is a transfer RNA. Holy elucidated the structure of tRNA. tRNA is an important example of a hybrid molecule. The RNA part contains 73 to 93 nucleotides that form the three loops and an acceptor stem formed by hydrogen bonding between complementary ribonucleotides C with G, A with U. Now the structure of tRNA contains mainly four arms. First arm is the acceptor arm. This arm is kept with a sequence CCA, cytosine, cytosine, adenine, sequence from 5 prime to 3 prime. The amino acid attached to the acceptor arm Second one is the anticodon arm. This arm, the central loop of the transfer RNA is the anticodon loop. The anticodon contains three nucleotides that create a code. The acceptor binds to one amino acid which is specific to the code of the anticodon and the three base anticodon complements a three base sequence in the mRNA. In this way, the mRNA directs the synthesis of proteins by telling the order of amino acids. Most of the amino acids have more than one mRNA code, a tract called as a degeneracy. We generally termed as a degeneracy. In this cases, the third base can vary or wobble. It is also called as a wobble hypothesis. Four three base codes have specific functions. AUG, it is a Starting codon indicates exactly where reading of the three base codes should begin. Because the bases on the mRNA are read as triplets and almost all triplets code an amino acid, it is essential that the starting point be exact. AUG also codes for methionine within the RNA code, but N formyl methionine is coded when AUG is used as, as the start signal. Other three UAA, UAG and UGA are the stop signals means stopping. The start and stop codons are very useful for identifying genes within the DNA sequences. Now another arm is the D arm. It is named 
due to the presence of dihydrouridin. Another arm is the T psi C arm. This arm contains sequence of thymine, pseudouridin and cytosine. Another example of arm is the variable arm. It is named calling as this arm is the most variable in tRNA. Now, in detail we will discuss ribosomal RNA. What is our RNA? The matching of mRNA codon and the tRNA anticodon occurs within the ribosome which is a very complex assembly of RNA and proteins. The RNA is made up of two major subunits that are identified by their size as measured by sedimentation rate and it is symboled as a S. For prokaryotes they are 50S and 30S. The 30S subunit is further subdivided into 5S, 16S and 23S components. But 5S is having 120 nucleotides long, 16S is 1500 nucleotides long and while 23S is 2900 nucleotides long. The ribosome is a large structure, they are approximately 60 percent RNA and 40 percent protein. The three base code of the mRNA is a translated into an amino acid polymer or a protein. Starting with the initial AUC sequence, the ribosome reads the mRNA code three bases at a time. It finds the matching tRNA and binds the codon and anticodon through hydrogen bonding. The ribosome keeps two sides side by side because this allows it to covalently link the incoming amino acid to the last amino acid of the growing chain via peptide bond that releases H2O means water. Then the ribosome shifts it, its position three bases further to the three prime end of the mRNA and repeats the process. Now the ribosome keeps elongating the protein until it reaches one of the stop codons. A cell has thousands of ribosomes and some microorganism increase the number when they are growing rapidly. Now we discuss the function. Effective storage, expression and reproduction of genetic message characterize individual species and also discriminate them from one another and assure their stability over successive generations. Because DNA is the repository of genetic information in each living cell, its integrity and stability are significant to life. The main function of nucleic acid is to store and transmit genetic information. First we discuss replication. The structure of DNA allows for its replication and repair with near perfect fidelity. The capacity of living cells to preserve their genetic material and to duplicate it for the next generation results from the structural complementarity between the two halves of the DNA molecule. The basic unit of DNA is linear polymer of four different monomeric subunits. Deoxyribonucleotides arranged in a precise linear sequence. It is this linear sequence that encodes the genetic information. Now DNA repair, DNA is not inert rather it is also one type of chemical entity which is also subject to assault from the environment and any resulting damage if not repaired will lead to mutation and possibly disease also. Based known example of the link between environmental induced DNA damage and disease is that of skin cancer which can be caused by excessive exposure to UV radiation in the form of sunlight and to a lesser degree tanning baths also. In addition to genetic insults caused by the environment, the very process of DNA replication during cell division is prone to error. The rate at which DNA polymerase adds incorrect nucleotides during DNA replication is a major factor in determining the spontaneous mutation rate in an organism. While a proofreading enzyme normally recognizes and corrects many of these errors, some mutations survive this process. Estimates of the frequency at which human DNA undergoes lasting uncorrected errors 
range from 1 into 10 is to minus 4 to 1 into 10 is to minus 6 mutations per gamete for a given gene. A rate of 1 into 10 is to minus 6 means that a scientist would expect to find one mutation at a specific locus per 1 million gametes. The gene is a segment of DNA or a sequence of deoxyribonucleotides. The sequence of deoxyribonucleotides is faithfully copied to a complementary sequence, the messenger RNA or a mRNA. By copying the DNA code into mRNA, the cells can use the information on the DNA without destroying or distorting it. Within the ribosome, the mRNA directs the assembly of protein by indicating the order in which the amino acid are to be joined. The code on the mRNA identifies which type of transfer RNA or tRNA should enter the ribosome and supply a particular amino acid to the growing protein chain. Different tRNA molecules bond specifically to the range of amino acids needed to make enzymes and match specifically with the code on the mRNA. The mechanism of bringing tRNA and mRNA together in ribosome is versatile and efficient way for the cells to be able to synthesize any and all types of enzymes as they need them and use that information to direct the synthesis of new protein. Now conclusion, we are now going to conclude the session. We have seen many similarities and differences between both DNA and RNA and also studied the vital role of nucleic acid in living cells.